This edition of the Ridley Report is brought to you by LRN.FM. Feds don't want you to hear them. I've never given a lecture after a wedding and before karaoke, uh, especially not on mass incarceration, so I'm afraid I might end up uh, sort of polluting the mood a bit. Uh, a lot of the data and statistical information that I have to present is borderline depressing, um, but obviously relevant to the themes of freedom and liberty that people find important here at Porkfest. So I think Jason Osborne and a number of the uh, promoters and organizers of the event definitely thought that people would benefit from, from hearing some of the research findings that I work on. Um, so in short, um, my, my research is focused on understanding um, incarceration in particular. Uh, I look at both literatures that come out of communities of incarcerated peoples, as well as historical experiences where incarceration was invented and developed, and then the subsequent effects that that uh, particular technology of law enforcement tends to have on other forms of institutions in society, the legal process more generally, social institutions like the church and family, as well as uh, economic conditions, wealth, prosperity, militarism, etc. So um, when defining this sort of subject matter from a social scientist perspective, before you can understand what it is that incarceration does in our society, you need a clear and accurate vision. We need to sort of like all come to terms with what it is that we're discussing and what it is that's the object of our inquiry. So, if you look at um, the majority of literature that's out there in social sciences on incarceration, uh, the field is predominantly um, occupied, not necessarily by economists, but by other forms of social scientists, sociologists, anthropologists, what's called ethnographists. Uh, ethnographers are people who live amidst the communities that they're studying, and they observe and, and analyze the social structures that they find there, and then explain the functions and processes that they go through. That's really cool, guys. What point do you say no, Officer um, In this literature, the contemporary form of imprisonment is most distinguished from other forms of law enforcement by means of two critical factors. The first being individuated cells and time-based, the second, time-based criminal sentencing. So this practice where we um, use incarceration for criminal punishment. It's, it's the dominant form of criminal punishment around the world today. Um, it's first developed in the late 18th century, the late 1700s in England and the United States. These were the first major first world developed economies, developed societies that invented a technological um, architectural device, the prison system, to implement as far as a means of promoting social order, a means of promoting uh, social compliance, the rule of law. Um, Jeremy Bentham, who was a member of the classical school of economics, he was an economist, a political philosopher, um, he actually came up with the design of incarceration that's up here right now, uh, referred to as the panopticon. And Bentham thought that this architectural model could work not only for prison systems, but for a variety of institutional um, spaces. In other words, what he thought it could do was resolve, in economic terms, the principal agent problem. The principal agent problem is pretty straightforward. I explain it to my students as, a job ain't nothing but work. Um, when my boss is not around as a faculty member, I tend to do nothing. I goof off, I shirk, I search YouTube videos for puppy stampedes and sit with my feet up and smoke my e-cig. As soon as my dean walks in my office, I pretend like I'm busy. I, like, I, I open different windows on my computer. Right? That's sort of the basic incentive incompatibility that all firms face, right? You, you're going to hire people and their incentive is to maximize their utility of leisure and minimize their disutility of labor. Employers want the opposite. They want you to work as hard as you possibly can and pay you as little as they possibly can get away with. Well, what Bentham was describing was that if only there was a way to constantly observe behaviors, if only there was a way to be assured that employees 
felt like they were always and everywhere being observed by their bosses. They would never stop working. I would never go back to opening uh, Corgi Puppy Stampede videos on YouTube and I would always stay busy writing academic research papers that no one reads. Um, in this vein, Bentham modeled his panoptic design for, for nursing homes, for manufacturing houses, and prison systems. He said, oh, and it would also probably work in this prison environment. It's the same concept is um, repeated in, a, in a, social, uh, a, a social choice theorist named uh, B.F. Skinner, um, who was a behavioral psychologist. Uh, basically, he put pigeons in boxes and got them to do weird stuff. LRN.FM, 24 hours of Liberty Radio every day. Now available on satellite, too, at sat.lrn.fm. That's what a satellite sounds like. Put it on your unlicensed station. Wear it in your hair. But above all, don't despair. The Liberty message is getting out. And right now, you're missing it. Or maybe you're not. But skip on over to LRN.FM. Feds don't want you to hear them.